Colonel Allen West here in the studio. Did you get a tour of the border? Yeah. What did you go see? Something. Well, we went down, right down on the Rio Grande. Went to uh, this little small town right behind the, uh, the junk bar, the name of the place. And we saw where you can't defend the border by being off of a border. I mean, that's basic military uh, tactics and procedures. If you're going to defend the border, if you're going to secure the border, you have to be up on it. And so what we're doing is we're seeding over, you know, um, a quarter to half a mile. And once some people infiltrate and they get a quarter, half a mile in, then they can, you know, split out and go wherever they want to. So they had the one area where they had some type of wall that was mm-hmm. built up, but then on the other side, it was just wide open. Yeah. So it just didn't make any real sense. No, what makes it worse is that folks who are coming in, uh, they know they can game the asylum program. The, and that's the key thing. And when we talked to them, the, the uh, commander there at the station said, you know, you have people exploiting a broken system. And unless we get the people up in Washington, D.C. to get off there, you know, they took us and fix this thing, you know, people are going to continue to do that. Colonel, it's been broken for the longest time. It, it has. More but, than a generation. But, but at some point in time, we have to decide, are we still going to fight for American sovereignty or we're going to play these games? Because as long as you have these loopholes, as long as you tell people that if you show up with children, well, you know, you're going yeah. to be able to come right in. Or if you come up and say, you know, you know, I, I'm, I have a fear of being of returning, mm-hmm. which is not really one of the conditions of asylum. If you are not politically persecuted or, or prosecuted, if you're not being persecuted because of your religious beliefs, and furthermore, you can apply for asylum at the embassy in whatever country of the United States of America. And then when you get to the first uh, country's border, that's where you ask for asylum. But you don't say, well, I'm just going to you know, travel all along this way and through this country and that country because I really just want to show up here. Well, we got a president who is wrestling with the situation. Mm-hmm. Like first time in my lifetime. He is who he is. And yeah. He's not a politician. No. He never won dog catcher and suddenly becomes president. You know, he, and, he's, and he just wants to solve the issue. 10 4. So, where's your money? You, you think this issue is going to get solved? Because it's got to be fixed legislatively first. I'm yeah. not holding my breath that the Democrats are going to be doing anything. Oh, no, anything no, no. Anytime uh, soon. Absolutely not. I mean, you know, you even have your elected officials here in this county and in this city uh, that are saying it's a manufactured crisis, yet they're still asking for, you know, federal funding to help them and and assist them in rectifying the situations that they see because it's a drain on the services here. So they're going to continue to tout that line. But this is a great uh, issue for, you know, the Republican Party, for conservatives to have going into the 2020 election cycle. You know, the president really out outfoxed these guys when he said, you know, maybe we just take these illegal immigrants and we just, you know, ship them and, and allow them to stay in the sanctuary cities. And they start freaking out and no, 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 no. Well, you're a sanctuary city for illegal immigrants, so we're going to give you illegal immigrants. And it, your I name. Mean, you even got Cher. Cher's <laughs> coming out and saying, you know, we can't take we it. We can't take we it. Can't, I can't handle that truth. And so you have really put them <laughs> in a position where you show their hypocrisy. Because this is what they really want, Sergio. They really want these illegals to be in states that they want to flip. Because when you think about what they have done, the House of Representatives under Nancy Pelosi voted to allow illegals to vote in local elections. That's amazing. It's, you know. It's mind-boggling. Well, you know, she came here to Texas and she started with this new word called newcomers. And newcomers should vote. And now you got, you know, Robert Francis Bob O'Rourke. I refuse to call him by a name. He is a white Irish boy. Okay. He is, <laughs> about, the he is about as much as Hispanic as I am. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, his name is Bob. But here's Bob talking about we, we welcome asylum seekers. And so they're, 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 the manner by which they can manipulate language to, to redirect from the real issue is, 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 is mind-boggling. Let's talk about something else now. In your message to young, liberty-minded patriots mm-hmm. that you're visiting here in South Texas, tell me a little bit about what you said to them and maybe what you have in your heart to com- share with them. You know, all, all I taught to was my story. And, you know, I'm a kid that was born in the inner city of Atlanta, Georgia. In 1961, I was born in a blacks-only hospital. In 1961, wow. blacks could not go on Fort Lauderdale Beach, nor could they go on Palm Beach Island. Fifty years later, I was sworn as the congressional representative of Fort Lauderdale Beach and Palm Beach Island. Wow. That's America. America is not someone telling you we're going to give you something for free. America is saying that whatever dream, goal, desire that you want, you can achieve it here if you are willing to put in your own determination. And that's what, the, you know, each and every one of us has a story we can tell. And that's what we should be doing. And, and as I said, looking at, uh, you know, what's happening here in the Rio Grande Valley, 
America has a front door. We want people to come through the front door. We want you to respect who we are. We want you know to respect our country, our, our rule of law, and, and our principles and our values. Don't come through the back door because that's a disrespectful thing to us. So I, I just want the people that are here in the Rio Grande Valley, in McAllen, in Far, and uh, uh, what's the other city? I'm just going blank yeah. here. Mission, Mission, all, all along the Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, Harlingen, everywhere. I want you to tell your story. I want you to tell the story about why you're proud of being an American. And the other thing I did was uh, I read uh, an incredible letter, 24 February, 1836, the letter of William Barrett Travis at the Alamo. And a lot of people just need to every day read that letter and understand this was a 26-year-old young man that wrote that letter. Ain't that something? Wow. (laughs) Held the Alamo for 13 days with 185 people. And just chat, we should be challenging young people here in Texas. What type of millennial do you want to be? You want to be a Travis millennial or you want to be a, you know, a slack jaw millennial? You want to be a California millennial? Stay in California. But here in Texas, we want millennials that go after the model of William Barrett Travis. We've been feeling uh, a little bit like Travis down here where we don't think the cavalry is coming anytime soon. To, then you fight. To, to stop this yeah, then you tsunami fight. of humanity coming here because we don't have any representation and national media. Well, they ain't doing us any favors. Well, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, Sergio, because, uh, you know, folks ask, you know, what are you doing? I say, I'm going everywhere in Texas where it's blue. (laughs) I don't need to go where it's red. I mean, I'd like to, but I'm going where it's blue. You may need to go to more places now, buddy. Uh Uh-oh. Well, (laughs) I've been saying now, this last senatorial election, for me, I I saw it's a real wake-up call. It was huge. We lost all of Houston. I know uh, Harris, County. Harris County, everything, and now it's JPs, spreading. sheriff, yeah, and judges, it's all blue, everything gone, mm-hmm. and, and all this was the Robert Francis o- O'Rourke mm-hmm. uh, wave, mm-hmm. and so at the moment Texas has a, a thin, shiny crust of red, with uh, beneath the surface is purple, and the big cities are dip, deep blue no, right now. It's, it's scary. We're purple right now. Yeah, that's and, real scary. And, and I live in Dallas. Well, I live in Garland, but that's part of Dallas County, and Oof. the exact same thing. You lost them yeah, there. The big Fort time. Worth went 50 50. Fort Worth 50 Well, now they've got their sights there because so, so many people have been complacent here in Texas. And, you know, the second book that I wrote is called uh, Hold Texas, Hold the Nation, Victory or Death. It's that important question that we're not asking people that are moving into Texas. Welcome to Texas. Why are you here? You know, you, you don't need to come here and bring in the failed policies from California, Illinois, New York, New Jersey. I mean, you, you came here to Texas because you want economic growth yeah. and prosperity. So why do you want to bring the insidious principles of, you know, wealth redistribution, nationalizing economic production? Think about this. You know, South by Southwest has a young lady speaking there by the name of Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, that's, that is, that's a joke. But, but, but think about this. Here is a woman coming into the great state of Texas that wants to completely destroy and get rid of the oil and natural gas industry. So what happens to the economy of a place like Texas? And you got people, you know, cha- clapping and cheering and everything like that. Yeah. You got to be kidding me. Dunderheads. That's they amazing. Are. Yeah. When people ask you, Colonel Allen West, my guest right now, when people ask you, why are you a Republican? You're not supposed to be Republican. Wink, wink. You know what I mean. You're not supposed to be a Republican. Oh. Same thing for Latinos you around see, here. You, you set me up. For same su- thing. You set me up for success, man. Because if you study your history, July the fourth, 1867, the Republican Party of Texas, there were 20 whites and 150 blacks that founded it. Boom. Okay. Boom. The, two of the first three chairmen of the Republican Party of Texas were black. Oh. <laughs> One of the longest running was Norris Wright Cooney from 1884 to 1898. On the other side, the Democrats. They were out there creating the Ku Klux Klan and, yeah. you know, trying to keep blacks from running for elected office and, you know, coming up with that thing called Black Codes and Jim Crow and everything. So historically, I can tell you, there is no reason why I should be a Democrat. And when I think about the decimation of, of the black family, the traditional nuclear black family, that's because of a Democrat. Lyndon Baines Johnson, Great Society Programs. When I look at the the urban economic plantation that the, the that has been created all of these places are controlled by who by democrats yeah but when i think about the fundamental principles of faith family individual responsibility education service to the nation that's conservative thought and that is really the basis of the minority communities when you talk in the hispanic community you're talking about people of faith 
You're talking about people that believe in family. You're talking about people that believe in small business entrepreneurship, uh, a, a work ethic. And if I'm correct, the group that has the most Medal of Honors in the United States of America ain't white. They're Hispanic. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. So service to the country. Yeah. So that's what we need to do, Sergeant. We've got to start talking to people not about so much party, but we have to start talking about principles and values. And it is easy to undermine everything about the Democrat Party. And I always remember that letter that William Barrett Travis wrote. He gave it to a young Hispanic man by the name Juan Seguin. And he delivered it to Sam Houston. I've said for the longest time that in, in our community, the JFK Democrats, conservatives, God-fearing, Absolutely. strong people, pro-lifers, mm-hmm. uh, defenders of our nation, defenders of liberty, they're still, <laughs> they're still on the blue side. And they're mixed in with uh, a new generation of confused Children that were taken over the, the Democrat Party. It's, it's not the party of Kennedy. It's, it's not your daddy's it, it uh, Democrat Party. My parents were registered Democrats. They they would be a, just totally abhorred yeah. by this. They would not be a part of this. And we so easily sell the birthright of liberty or birthright of liberty for a, a plate of political lentil soup, a bowl yeah. of political lentil soup. It's, and stale bread. Yeah. Look at look at Venezuela. Yeah. 20 to 25 Great years examples ago. examples for us to look at 20 today. to 25 years ago, one of the most prosperous countries in this hemisphere. And then someone comes along, Hugo Chavez, and starts talking the same trash that we hear Bernie Sanders, Ocasio-Cortez, and all the other cast of, you know, clowns running for president on the Democrat Party side. And, 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 and you know, why would anyone want to fall for that? Why, why would anyone want to be told you're incompetent, you're incapable of doing anything yourself? The only thing you can do is wait, sit around and wait for us to give it to you for free. The stinking breath masses, the hordes, though, they they almost, at this point, it scares me, Colonel. I think they outnumber liberty-minded people in this country. I, I, we talked about this earlier, you and I mm-hmm, on the phone, mm-hmm. about civics training and, and proper uh, teaching of core American values, just the concept of liberty, the origin mm-hmm. of it, the practice of it, the free market that comes, the, the practice of talents and strengths and all everything that is that is God-given. Not from a king, not from an agency, not mm-hmm. from a government. All these, none of these concepts were ever taught to me in school. And I know they weren't taught to people before me. It's, we've gone more than a generation. And now we've got this new generation of people that are completely ignorant of our common heritage, which is liberty mm-hmm. and what it means to live it and teach it and practice it and defend it. We, and we are a country that is so easily swayed by that bowl of government lentil soup and stale bread absolutely we're we're so easily moved in that and then we got a whole new generation uh, the snowflakes the new fascists who mm-hmm. who refuse to listen to the message of liberty and call it hate speech because if you have an opposing point of view we have this culture and the academic administrators at these universities who are mm-hmm. complicit in this new fascist culture mm-hmm. that will allow these children safe spaces and refuse to listen and exchange ideas and see what works and what doesn't. Because they can't defend it. Fascinating times that we live in, Colonel, and they, I don't know if we've got the numbers to overcome that. We're going to need a new generation to rise up and defend this country. Well, and I think that we can do that. And, uh, you know, this is one of the things I, I, I would challenge you to do, Sergio, on this Independence Day. I don't say 4th of July. 4th of July is just a date. But on this Independence Day, I want you to read the entire Declaration of Independence on your radio show. There are a lot of people in America who I never... Will read the entire Declaration of Independence. I will. And we'll post it on SoundCloud and YouTube and all that. To, because to if they don't, they don't understand the essence, the genesis of the liberties that created this great nation, then it's just another place. And that's the same thing when you have people moving in from California, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, and we that are here in Texas are not explaining to them how precious Texas is. We're not taking them to San Jacinto. We're not taking them to the Alamo. We're, 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 we're not taking them to any of these incredible places, Washington on the Brazos, to explain what makes Texas so special. Then they like, it can just be like any place else. Yes, sir. Thanks for stopping by, Colonel. My pleasure, brother. We're in this fight. Yes, sir. Let's win it. Amen. Remember what Travis said, victory or death. I prefer victory. you damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Allen West joining us on KURV.